Namaste and welcome. My name is Master Colleen Inman and I'm here with Zen Yoga. The idea, the today's question is, what is Zen Yoga? So we have a myriad of different yoga paradigms out in the world today. And so many people or students are seeking to understand what style of yoga, what does it mean, or more, what can it do for that person, for the individual? Is it what you're looking to connect with? So Zen yoga is based on a paradigm of mixing Zen, which is the present moment, and yoga, which is also about union and the idea of present moment. But a bigger view of the idea of Zen is Zen is actually a approach or an approach, a philosophy, uh, a method in which you achieve something. It's not necessarily an ideology or religion uh, or even a thing as much as it is an action. So being able to approach anything that you're doing with a state of Zen, a state of a presence, being fully engaged in this particular moment. So many things that happen that create a dissolve of the Zen or the present moment is when we're not unified with now. Yoga means union, of course. And the idea of being unified with now, and that has to do with being present, not being consumed by what may happen in the future or so consumed with what happened in the past. It said that the past is good for two things, and that is education and entertainment. So we want to, of course, learn from the past. It's not something that we want to throw caution to the wind and let go. And the same thing with the future. You do want to build and prepare for the strong future, but maybe not be lost in the worry of what could happen with the future. So this is an approach to how we uh, do anything, an approach to how we are with our family, meaning of engaging in the present moment, uh, calm, and uh, even when those emotions fluctuate, of uh, returning to the calm or returning to the moment, how we are with our relationships, how we are with business, how we are uh, going to the grocery store, any idea would be kind of returning and coming to uh, a Zen approach to that store. So even if you're in uh, resistance, I don't really want to go to the grocery store, can you find a way of acceptance and without resistance to that to the task at hand and become present and uh, connect to that experience? So the idea of Zen here is really about an approach, an approach to what? Uh, yoga, and yoga is union, uh, an approach, but also a balanced approach. So we have this very famous symbol here. <clears throat> this would be a yin-yang symbol symbolizing a balance of the light and the dark and the light within the darkness and the darkness within the light. So all things that are a balance. So we are looking for a balanced state. Ultimately, I'll get to in a moment, the balanced state needs to happen on a physical level, a energetic level, and then a mind or a spirit level, if you would. So if there is one of these is out of imbalance, then it creates the idea of suffering. So a lot of this wisdom teachers, maybe you could go with like the idea of removing suffering. Buddha, uh, that was the main teaching, was just uh, the absence of suffering, the absence of suffering in the body, the absence of suffering in the influx of energy, whether you're too lethargic or too anxious, and the suffering of the mind or the spirit. So the thoughts, things of that nature. And of course, yoga is a very uh, popular word like in the you know world today, or how about this? Not necessarily popular, but well-known word. And that yoga means to join, to bind, to yoke, to draw together. Ultimately, what are you trying to draw together is these three. They've been drawn as balloons. This is one of my favorite teachings from one of my teachers. And the idea here is we are looking to ascend. Ascend what? Ascend suffering. Suffering of the body, the energy, and the mind. Uh, but they are joined or yoked or moved together. So although some individuals may cultivate um, a fine-tuned athletic body, maybe the mind or the spirit or the energy aren't brought into harmony or into balance as well. So maybe the body goes up, but the energy and mind are kind of lacking. So if these were helium balloons, the body would be filled with helium and that balloon would be going up. But that balloon would be limited on going up based on these other balloons, simply by the virtue that they're joined or they're yoked together. This is the idea that we exist more than on one level. 
So here we have the three, one, two, three. And if they can all be filled with helium and they can all ascend, you'll have a greater ascension of the suffering. So if you only work on two, right, you have one that's heavier. If you work on all three, we can kind of bring them up. So the idea, understand that there's a join, come into it from a Zen approach or a present moment. This is what needs to be happening and looking for balance, balancing the body, the energy and the mind. This is a yin yang state and later it will be the five element understanding. But we are going to try and lift this up. This is all something that's taught through the Zen wellness system in the school or online. Uh, and Zen yoga covers something called Hatha, Qigong, and then mindfulness. So maybe these words could be new to you. Uh, hatha is a form of a traditional yoga. So Zen might have more of an Asian feel to it. And yoga might come more out of um, like a Hindi culture or the India region. So yoga here the, is really based on a Hatha yoga. Ha, tha means sun and moon. So again, we're looking for a sun moon, meaning a positive and a negative, or a yin and a yang, a bright and a dark, hot and a cold. We're always looking for balance. It's kind of the Goldilocks, right? So balancing hot and cold to find the warm, right? You don't want hot porridge or cold porridge, you want it just right. So this is the sun and the moon, the two polarities coming in to mix. So we are ultimately looking for that. Now, of course, under Hatha, that sun moon, we have many aspects. We have the eight limbs of yoga, and that's what's going to be, you know, of course, practiced here. Now, of course, under Qi Gong, Qi is going to translate directly to the idea of energy, and Gong is going to be work. So if you've ever had a day where you're like, oh, I don't have any energy, and maybe you reach for that caffeinated supplement or something like that to help kind of bring up your energy. So we can work on enhancing our natural energy through Qigong, of course, through pranayama and asana techniques. We can talk about that at a different time. But the Qigong, the energy work, or maybe my energy is too much. I'm not really kind of low without energy. I'm too anxious. I have too much is kind of moving through me. So can I find a way to kind of calm that? Again, I'm looking for like a middle uh, energy level, if you would. Uh, and then the same thing here with the mind is, can I create a mindfulness? This almost relates to the idea of Zen, but the mindfulness, being mindful in what I do. You hear people say, oh, let's be conscious, uh, the consciousness that resides within. So how mindful am I in, in my approach to life? How mindful am I in uh, my approach to this task? to this errand. Uh, so being mindful and being present and mindful too on the energy in the body. So maybe mindful eating, maybe mindful uh, exercise, mindful energy, how I'm going to establish that work and what I'm going to do with this. And mindfulness on creating a relationship with the I am, the observer, the spirit, the uh, indwelling oneness within that which is eternal. There's many, many names for it. So whatever connects to you as far as spirit, soul, mind, consciousness, you can put that in place there. That's kind of for you. But the idea is can we be mindful in cultivating that connection? Can we be mindful in bringing up that balloon and bringing up that awareness? So here is Zen Yoga. This is an overview of what Zen Yoga is. Of course, Zen Yoga is offered uh, here in the studio. We are available or online, zenyoga.com. This is Master Colleen Inman. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you have a blissful day. Namaste.